Hey guys, this is Eric and welcome to another tutorial. This is basically a request from one of my YouTube subscribers about how to morph in DaVinci Resolve 15. I have two mods that I've done. One is a mango morphing into a banana and then a head morphing into a skull. Uh, so let's just take a look at it. So first thing I'm gonna do is to just come here and put a fusion composition down here and I'm gonna go into it, select it and then go into the fusion page. Well I have prepared the images already. I'm gonna go, we're gonna first focus on the, the head morphing into a skull. We're not gonna touch on the banana but it's the same technique so you can use it for any other thing. So I'm gonna paste here what I have prepared already, my two images that's gonna be used for the moth. And the first one here is the head I got on Google. I mean it's a good head. And then I have another one here. This is a skull and a very sexy one. Pretty skull. I think this could be my skull. Well it doesn't matter whose skull it is. Alright so basically these are the two images and I'm gonna put down a background nude and I'm gonna join the first image to the background and we're just gonna view it here and then scale this down to you can see the full head I mean it's a nice head we need to see it and we're gonna also join the second image and then we're gonna view that one we're gonna scale that one just try to match it up a little bit and we'll position it and just try try and match it up a little bit and just, just uh, rotate it a little bit yeah that's not bad Okay, let's go to the left a little bit, just just about that. And when we select this, the last match, uh, we can use the blend mode of uh, 0.3% just to, so we can see both images. You right click and go to add to. So we're gonna go to, to warp and we're gonna go grid warp. And that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna hold shift and then join it to the first image. So once you hook it to it, if you come to the grid warp, uh, we have basic settings here as in the grid size you can ch change the number of divisions that you want but I'm gonna leave it to the default divisions because it's quite okay for what I'm looking to achieve what I'm basically gonna do is to make sure that we change the magnet type to select it that way I can select individual points and then move them so what we're gonna do now is to make sure that our herd is really aligned to the skull so I'm gonna start off here and then start repositioning things to get it in place. Just wanna move our points so that it's aligned. All right, so one thing I didn't tell you is that you also wanna make sure that you're set to destination, not source. You don't want to distort the source image because right now if, if we switch to source you can see that it goes back to the original state so you want to make sure that you, your destination because default is going to be on destination because that's where we want to uh, deform to so destination is the deformation uh, and then the source is the original image and let's keep on trying to align our herd and here I'm going to pull this really up and then dent this one in a little bit so just to match the score so that's it and then I'm gonna move his chin all the way down uh, all the way here to match um, I'm gonna move his lips all the way down to match the teeth of the score yeah so you can see that we're trying to align the mouth to the score's teeth and that's not that okay and the nose we're gonna squish it in a little bit squish this bit in as well and then we wanna open the nose up because there's a big hole here you can also hold the tangents and then try to distort it as much to match it as much as possible I think that's cool so if we come to the blend mode and then we try to bring it down we can see this is a sad face we just created uh, it's really sad so we leave it back around 0 0.4 before we do anything else we want to copy this deformation that we've made a grid warp and paste the copy somewhere so we, 
and then we're gonna go into it and this is the time we start our animation both uh, even though we've distorted it we've not animated it yet so I'm gonna go up to frame 50 this is where my animation will end so at frame 50 I'm gonna right click on where it says right click here for much animation I'm gonna say animate that's gonna create a keyframe for this deformation that I've done and then I'm gonna move down to like frame 20 that's gonna give me like 30 frames so like from 0 to 20 nothing happens and from frame 20 I'm gonna just hit on this arrow here that says reset all points and that's gonna set it back to the original position so now when we move through 20 to 50 we get a deformation going on to that state that's cool I'm gonna delay this while it after we've animated it we're gonna copy it and paste it and then we're gonna put the same thing here for our second image which is the skull and that's not gonna work it's gonna distort the skull into a different state so what we're gonna do is to select that what we're gonna go into the properties and we're gonna say copy destination to source so what we're essentially doing here is we're swapping the animation so the end uh, frame is going to be the settled um, uh, deformation it's not deformed but the beginning that's 20 is going to deform it try and match it it see it's done a pretty much good job it's trying to fit this skull into this uh, small head but you could see it's not really perfect at this stage you don't really we don't really bother so what we're going to do is go on frame 20 and then we select this this calls um, grid warp and try to make sure that's really aligned to the head this time we're trying to align um, the skull to the head so we're gonna have to give him some more flesh in here and then over here too we need some more flesh a little bit of flesh and then we're gonna tuck this one in back push it in just make sure that not much is that well so actually we're pretty much close to our muff and we also wanna lift uh, his chin and in back into place a little bit uh, we're gonna lift this bit and match uh, this this cause uh, teeth with the original so if we scrub through you can see both of them are morphing from one state to the other as you can see here so the next thing we're gonna do is to just stay on, go to frame 20 and select the last match and then we're gonna animate the blend so at frame 20 we're gonna stay on this head and then we're gonna animate it and go to frame 50 and then we set it back to 1 and let's see what we got so far that's it we got the smiley face changing into this very pretty face Alright, so you can see it's very simple and you can go in and try to adjust things because here on the final destination on frame 50 you can see that we still get some edges of the older ones so you can always go back in and then push things into place so you don't get those kind of places that you don't want you can always adjust it so let's see how we can use a color corrector to achieve a decaying if you go into the original one that I did it's kind of decaying colors over here at the edges so let's just go back and see how we can achieve that uh, let me just hook this back to the output so we know what we're doing okay I just put down a color corrector and hook the overall thing to the color corrector and we view it. essentially it's the same thing so what I'm gonna do is you just bump up the contrast a little bit and then I'm gonna uh, just colorize it just give it an orange color and we're gonna merge it back on top of the same thing that we've done so what we've done here is we just colored it here and then merge it on top of it and in that match we're gonna just change the apply mode and we're gonna change it to hard, hard light you can choose any mode to achieve any effect you want but I think hard light works and what we essentially have to do is to animate the blend mode we're gonna start from 20 to 50 so I'll select this and then right click and animate 
the blend and we also want to show our spline so this is the spline and we're gonna move up to a frame 50 and we're gonna add a keyframe so what we're essentially doing is a frame 20 and 50 it should be the same blend mode okay. at frame 20 we're gonna set the keyframe to 0 and same as frame 50 set a keyframe to 0 and somewhere if you scroll down somewhere in the middle uh, in the middle here 20 and 50 we can set a keyframe to 1 so what it's actually doing is we just just click here to uh, view everything so what we're doing is we from 0 fading and then we fade back down to the original state but it's not looking attractive so we select all of these keyframes and use shift s to smoothen them and what we can do is we don't want this to start immediately so we're gonna just drag it back in and we also want this to settle really quickly so we want to lift it up like that so let's see what we get so it doesn't start immediately facing gradually and then really fades back down and we don't want it to affect the whole image so what we can do is to select this match and then create a mask sorry the mask has been attached to a different thing let's attach the mask to this one and let's just view the output so we can shift our mask uh, over here and then we're gonna soften it just to blend it in a little bit and then we can also use the bottle width to just send in a little bit nice smooth of uh, decaying good so you can always go back in and tweak your effect to your taste you can also bump up the gain whatever you want to do with it now that you have that effect you can actually make some cool stuff happen you can go in and just reduce it or you can just in the gamma or you can change the color to whatever taste that you want something like that maybe that would do for you so you hear that come off moth over there so whatever you want it's just about your own taste so I think something like this works yeah okay one thing that you have to bear in mind is we can also go into the blend here and we're gonna show the spline and we don't want it to go all the way to one so you can just always bring it down a little bit so it doesn't go all the way up so yeah something like that so, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial keep your comments coming and keep your requests coming in and I'll do it for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel and share the videos.